morning it's a monday it's a new week It's right at eight o'clock. So we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Um, welcome to a new week. Let's just, let's see, actually, I have a block for today's practice. So if you um, have a block, grab one. If you don't, it'll be fine. We are going to play with some arm balances today. Um, but that'll be at the end. We'll play with arm balances. So if you have a block, use it. It'll be helpful. And um, let me pin myself. And let's actually start on our backs and just have your block handy. We'll just start laying down. So just lay in a way that's comfortable for you. So maybe your knees bent, feet flat on the floor. You could even take your feet wide and let your knees knock together. And then let your hands just kind of rest on your lower belly. And just check in with how your body is feeling today, how your mind, kind of just that emotional internal climate is this morning. This morning time is a time that we can kind of set ourselves up for our day. So I just invite you to think about you know, what is the most useful emotion for you to fuel the action needed today? The emotion I've been working on cultivating lately is just engaged, to feel engagement a real participatory feeling. So I can offer you mine or you can think of something that would be useful for you. And even just that word of that emotion can be a nice mantra to help you start to cultivate that internally. And connect it with your breath. Start to feel how expansive your breath can be. When you breathe in through your nose, let your shoulders relax, but let your rib cage get really involved in the inhale and the exhale. And just hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze and a rock. 
We'll find some twists. Just open your arms out to a T. Drop your knees over to the right and then let your head kind of look to the left. You bring your right hand onto your left knee. That helps your twist. Kind of breathe into your belly here. Just kind of feel yourself rotating around that center, around your core. And breathe into that left lung. You've got a lot of space. And then we'll just switch sides. So knees over to the left. Let your head look to the right. Just let yourself kind of settle. Feel that compression in your belly. Extra space in your right ribs. Come back to center and we'll make these twists a little more dynamic. So keep your arms out to a T. Just drop your knees over to the right to hover. Come up through center and then drop your knees over to the left just to hover above the floor and come through center. So you're moving from that low belly. And just go back and forth. Connect this with your breath. I like to exhale up, inhale to the side. Exhale up. And after you've done that breath pattern a couple of times, switch it up. So exhale to the side. And inhale up. Go to the left one more time. And then keep your knees up, but let them open wide. Just let your inner, your big, inner big toes touch and then reach your hands up in between your knees and really curl yourself into a little ball. Draw your knees towards your armpits. And then release, just reach your arms overhead. You can tap your toes to the floor. We'll do that about four more times. Just knees wide and then reach. And then release. Exhale as you curl up, really use that belly strength. Do one last one here. Really push your lower back into the floor, round through your belly, lift those knees towards your armpits, and then release. Bring your feet to the floor, hip distance apart. We'll just find a few rounds of bridge, just lifting your hips and lowering. And you can sweep your arms up overhead too, so you lift your hips and come down. Just inhale up and exhale the lower. Let's do two more. Inhale and exhale. And then last time you can keep your hands down by your hips, lift up and just hold. You can find a little bit of swaying or rocking. See if you can feel some freedom through your hips. Not too much clenching. Have a little bit of engagement in your hamstrings like you're pulling your heels back. And then release down. Just find a hamstring stretch on each side. Lengthen your right leg up toward the ceiling. You can interlace fingers behind the back of your thigh. And find the natural curves of your spine, back of your head, back of your heart, back of your pelvis are on the floor. Your lower back has just a little bit of space. 
And if you can keep that space and lengthen your left leg, go for that. So you're clearing through the front of that left hip as you lengthen out through the back of that right leg. Find some circles through your ankle. Maybe point and flex it. One more reach out through that heel and then bend your knee, foot to the floor and just switch sides. Straighten through that left leg and interlace behind your hamstring. Find the natural curves of your spine. So you've got some space under your low back, but the back of your pelvis is on the floor. You can keep that space under your low back. You can lengthen your left leg. And you can find some resistance of your left thigh into your hands. And point and flex, do some circles through that left ankle. Oh, well. Sorry, my, my um, microphone wasn't on. I hope you can hear me. I don't see any chats. Okay. Can you hear me, guys? Just let me know. I can hear you. Okay. Could you hear me before? Fine. Yeah, you've been good. Okay. All right. After you're done with your hamstring stretch, just hold on to the backs of your thighs. We're going to roll up and just make your way to a table and find a couple of cat and cows here. And then push back into a child's pose. Just let yourself curl up in a little ball. Maybe rock your hips from side to side. Walk your hands towards your knees, tuck your toes, and we'll just come up into standing forward fold, Uttanasana. And then back out of your Uttanasana a little bit. You can bring your hands to your knees, soften through your knees. And find a little bit of cat and cow action with just your pelvis. So really think about sending your sitting bones back and then tucking your tailbone under. And reach your heart forward and think about lengthening through your hamstrings with this. So let yourself fold enough that you feel this in your hamstrings as you really reach your sitting bones back. And it can be really tiny movements in your pelvis that I just want you to think of kind of lengthening at the top insertion part of your hamstrings. And then soften into your knees, just tuck your chin, let yourself roll up to standing. Reach high, just grab a hold of your left arm with your right hand. Find a big side bend over to your right. Push down through that left heel. Reach out through your left fingertips. And then come to center, just switch sides. Lengthen through that right arm. And come back to center and just take a walk up to the top of your mat. Set your feet up for chair pose. So about sitting bone distance apart, parallel, just sit down. And then reach your arms up. And then just exhale and let yourself fold, straighten your legs and let your arms swing behind you. Sit down, inhale to reach high. And then exhale, fold. And really let your breath get involved, big inhale and exhale. Just move here. We'll inhale up, exhale to fold, 
And then take a big step back with your left foot for a lunge. Bring your left knee down. Squeeze your heel and your knee toward each other as you reach high. Clear through the front of that left hip flexor. And then exhale your hands down inside of your right foot. You can toe heel that right foot out to the right a little bit and start to wiggle through your hips here. And then find length through that right leg. And then Do one more straighten and bend here. And then just plant your hands, come back into table. Take that right knee back. And just play with your hand placement and start to kind of feel like you're jumping off your hands and just do it in all different directions. So we just want to kind of tell our brain and our wrists that our wrists are capable of taking load in all different ways. And we do this on our knees, right? And the closer your hands are to your knees, um, the less low will be. And so you're just going to play all different directions. Fists, thumb side, pinky side, flat hands, back of your hands. Just kind of teaching all those tissues in your wrists and your fingers that they're resilient. And then pause, hands underneath your shoulders and just lift your right palm up off the floor and then lift your left palm. Just keep all four fingers. So we're kind of getting a stretch here and strengthening through your forearms. You can do alternates or you can do both at the same time. If you feel like you've got the strength, you can even take your knees back a little bit further. Just keep your shoulders over your wrists. And then let's stretch. Turn your right fingertips out to the right and then back to point at your right knee. Can you even find some softness in your elbow there? And then switch sides. Just take that left hand, bring it back. Softness in your elbow, any amount. And release, tuck your toes, sit back on your heels, stretch the bottoms of your feet. Feel my pinky toes. Open your arms out to cactus and then just let your right elbow come underneath your left. And you can bring those right fingertips up into your left palm or give yourself a hug. Shoulders out of your ears, breathe into the bottoms of your feet. Open your arms and just switch the cross, left elbow underneath. You can give yourself a hug or wrap into your eagle arms. Say hello to your shoulders. And your feet are probably talking to you by now. Release your arms. You can rock forward, wiggle out your toes, circle out your ankles. And then just cross your ankles underneath you. Sit back and we'll come into boat pose. Just scoot up a little bit. And just float here in your boat. And then really hug your knees into your chest and take a twist over to your left and really hug that right upper arm into your left thigh. And then come through center and go the other way. Really hug that right outer thigh into your left upper arm and just go back and forth, just finding your twist. Uh, exhale on that twist. Uh, exhale on your twist to your right. 
And then we're just going to roll over to the left and come onto your hands and knees here. Step your right foot outside of your right hand. So you're probably facing the back of your mat, and that's fine. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee, and then ground your left heel. So your feet are set up like they would be for a warrior two. And bend into that right knee. Really feel like you're sending your right inner groin back. Stacking that right knee over your right ankle. And then walk your hands over to the left. You're going to bum shot here. <laughs> so your arms are like downward facing dog, but your legs are like warrior two. And you're just really opening through that right inner groin hamstring. And you can even find a little bit of wiggling in your hips there, just to, so you feel that in your hamstring, in your inner groin. Find some freedom in your hip joint. And then keep walking your hands to the left, parallel your feet. And find a wide-legged forward fold, so outer edges of your feet. Parallel with the short edges of your mat, lengthen your spine, and let yourself bow here. Just kind of check out the difference from one side to the other. And then come onto fingertips or a block, and just bend deeply into your left knee. You can even lift your right toes, and then come back through center and bend deeply into your right knee. So go back and forth. And then to the left. Next time you bend in the right, well, actually, next time you bend in your left, just walk your hands over to the left. Take a big step back up to the top of your mat, feet wide, and sit down into a Malasana squat. You can wiggle out here. And then push into your heels, come all the way to standing. Toe, heel your feet back together. Just kind of recalibrate in your Tadasana. Bend into your knees, inhale, reach your arms high. And then exhale, just bow and let your arms swing. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, Uttatasana. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. And just really let your arms move effort effortlessly. Just warm through your shoulders. Feel your core. One more inhale. Exhale down. Big step back with that right foot. Right knee down. And inhale to reach into your low lunge. Take one more breath in. And then exhale, hands down inside of that left foot. You can toe heel your left foot to the left a little. And then find your wiggles here. And sway your hips from side to side. And then we'll straighten and bend that left knee. Any amount, you can walk your hands back and it doesn't need to come all the way straight but just kind of start warming through that hamstring. Let's just do one more. Come to your bent knee, plant your hands and push back into table. And let's do some serratus engagement. So we're just gonna move our shoulder blades, okay? And we're thinking about these muscles that are wrapping right here underneath your shoulder blade, kind of under your, around your rib cage and under your armpit. So push the floor away and let your shoulder blades spread. So my lower back's not involved at all. My lower back is just gonna stay neutral and then draw your shoulder blades together. Push the floor away, shoulder blades protract or spread apart and then draw shoulder blades together. And just do that here. Warming through your shoulders. 
and notice if you feel like you have more mobility on one side than the other. It's just information. See if you can make them as symmetrical as possible. Elbows stay straight. So this is just happening in your shoulder blades. And then protract, really push the floor away. And then just notice your hands. Feel really stable on your hands. And feel what feels most responsive. So you can experiment, but see if you can use that padding along the pinky edge of your hand without too much pressure in your wrist. And then rock your heart forward and just bend your elbows a couple of inches. Come back up and back to neutral. So we're just playing with a practice chaturanga. And see if you can keep your shoulder blades wide, but also keep your collarbones wide as you rock forward and lower, and then come back up. And then let's push all the way back into a child's pose, and we'll combine so child's pose and then come forward. You can bend those elbows, you come forward and just bring your heart forward and then push back. All right, then you can build on it a little more if you want. As you rock forward, my elbows are stacked over my wrist. You can tuck your toes and just float your knees up and then bring your knees back down and push back. So you find the flavor that's working for your shoulders, okay? So maybe you're just coming to child's pose, leaning forward and just bending your elbows a little bit. Or maybe you come to child's pose, slide forward and float your knees. Either way, let's do one more. And then push back, relax in your child's pose just briefly. And then walk your hands towards your knees, just tuck your toes and stretch your feet again. And we'll just briefly find our eagle arms on each side, right elbow underneath, big hug, or you can wrap up. And then open. Other side, elbow underneath, left elbow underneath, your right. And then release, release your toes, wiggle, cross your ankles, and then sit back and find your boat pose. So hug those knees into your chest. So we're looking more from, for compression today than we are even for height. And then find those twists. Really reach over to your left. Connect that left thigh with your right upper arm. And then switch. Back and forth a couple of times. Left. And right. And then we're just gonna roll over to the right and come onto your hands and knees. Step your left foot outside that left hand. Lift your right knee and ground your heel. So your feet are like warrior two. And then walk your hands over to the right. So we're doing this down dog, warrior two leg. So upper body's like down dog. Just kind of diagonally to the right of that left foot. And then push that left inner groin back. Push down in that left big toe ball now, but ground through your heel and lift your arch. You can wiggle a little bit through your hip. And then, then walk your hands to the right. Parallel your feet, look forward, and then exhale. Just let yourself bow here. You can get a little bit of wiggling in your pelvis and just notice how you feel from one side to the other. 
And so right, we want to have some freedom in our poses. Even when we're holding them, you can find little bits of movement just to kind of floss through your tissues and just to make friends with your body in this shape. And come up onto your fingertips and bend deeply into your right knee and then your left. And you can lift the straight leg toes. Right. And the next time you come to the right, just walk your hands to the right. We'll step to Malasana at the top of your mat. Squat down. You get your wiggles out here. And then go ahead and come all the way up to standing. Go and your feet together and just recalibrate in your Tadasana. Inhale and reach high and just exhale, sit down in Utkatasana, in your chair pose. And you can hold it this time. Feel your back muscles right there, connected all along the pinky edge of your arm. So your lats go from the top of your pelvis and wrap around. I mean, it's not all the same muscle, but they're all connected in a chain. Then bring your hands together. Lift your left elbow and bring it outside your right knee. If this is too much compression for you. You can bring your left hand to your outer left knee and right hand to your sacrum. Just find your twist. Maybe look to the right. And then exhale, unwind, Uttanasana. Inhale, left foot back into your lunge. You can bring that left knee down. So we like draw in toward the midline as you reach high. And then exhale, hands down. Inhale to reach your heart forward. And then exhale, you can straighten through that right leg. Inhale. And exhale. Let's just do one more. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, bend, ground through that left hand and open up into a big twist. You can stay here or you could bend your left knee, maybe reach back for that left foot. And then really squeeze that foot toward your bum and see if you can release your hand. Just engage through that hamstring, hands down. Step back into table and then push into your child's pose. And we'll do those chaturanga practices again. So from your child's pose, just bend your elbows and come forward. So your elbows are along your rib cage and then push back. If you want to tuck your toes and float your knees, you can try that. Let's just do one more. And your chaturanga, and then reach your heart forward. Find a cobra, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Find some softness in your knees and just experiment with the placement of your hands. So that chain of strength from your pelvis up your back, it goes out the pinky side of your hand all the way to that meaty part of your um, outer palm. You can tap into that strength by just kind of pushing into that outer edge of your hand and letting your hand have an arch in it. And so just experiment with that. I've always really cued that you 
push down into that inner webbing between your index finger and thumb. But I'm learning new things. So just see how that feels in your body. And then bring your knees down, cross your ankles underneath you and find your boat pose again. We'll just twist to the left, twist to the right, and then twist to the left. Just come into your table pose from here. Step your right foot outside that right hand. Lift your left knee, ground your heel, and find that down dog lunge. Stretching through that hip. And then kind of walk your hands in side of that right foot. Sorry, I'm gonna switch. So your hands are under your shoulders, okay? And now just find a little bit of chaturanga action with your hands here. So just bend into your elbows and then come on up. And you know, you can experiment with where your hands go. And maybe a few times you just move, you can do that little bouncing off your hands. And just feel the stability in your hips, in your legs, and then find some weight in your shoulders. So you might even rock that back heel up. Let's just play there for another breath. And then walk your hands to the left, parallel your feet, and fold. Bend deeply into your left knee, and then bend into your right knee. So you can keep your hands on the floor here, or maybe this time bring your hands to your heart as you move from side to side. The next time you come into that left knee and you're toward the top of your mat, just step into that Malasana squat toward the top of your mat. And push into your heels, stand up. And just step your feet parallel, find your Tadasana. Recalibrate. Bend into your knees, reach your arms high. And then exhale, hands to your heart. Lift that right elbow and bring it outside your left knee or right hand outside left knee. Lengthen through the crown of your head. And then you can twist. Feel that happening from your belly. But without too much rigidity. And then unwind, forward fold. Slip your right foot back. And exhale that right knee down. Inhale, reach high. And then exhale, hands down, side of that left foot, and toe heel your left knee out. And just straighten and bend that knee. This all should be getting pretty familiar. Next time that knee gets bent, you plant your right hand. Reach your left arm up into a big twist here. You can play with bending that back knee, maybe reaching for your foot. You can draw that foot in and then find some engagement, some strength through that right hamstring, and then maybe reach again. And then exhale, hand down. Push back into your child's pose. And then just come forward, find your little chaturanga. So elbows are bent. And notice where you put weight on your hands to really feel stable. Let's just do one more. Always tuck your toes and float your knees. And then strengthen through your back body. Find your back bend. Exhale. Down or facing dog. And 
Knees to the floor. Cross your ankles behind you. Find your boat pose. And this time let's twist to the right. And then come to center. Twist to the left. And then twist to the right. Then just roll over onto hands and knees. Left hand comes, and left foot comes outside of your left hand. Lift that back knee and then ground your heel. Step those down dog, I mean, that, those warrior two legs with your down dog arms. So just walk your hands to the right, just slightly and find your stretch. And then walk your hands in so they just come under your shoulders and just play with kind of bending your elbows and putting some weight on your hands. And you can even play with some arm placement here too. And you can rock maybe off of that back heel. And then walk your hands to the right, parallel your feet. Find your prasarta, padatanasana, wide leg forward fold. And then bend into your left knee. And into your right knee. You can have your hands at your heart or on the floor or a block. Next time you come to the right, step into your malasana and just sit down here. Now, our next time through, we're going to add some experiments with arm balances. So you can just do what we've already done, or you can play with those arm balances. But let's just try our first one. Okay. So we'll do crow. So you can just stay playing with your squat and just finding some movement here or even stillness. You can really snuggle your knees up towards your armpits and just push into your hands. So we've done this quite a bit. You can rock forward and back, rock forward. Maybe float your feet, maybe float just one foot. If you want, you can try this from a block and find your little perch on your block. And it just kind of helps you get the muscle memory of feeling your center of gravity be a little bit higher. Snuggle your knees up into your armpits planting your hands and kind of gripping the floor with your fingertips. And you can maybe lift one foot, maybe the other. Really like when we're in our, our boat pose, like you really feel lifting up from the center of your belly. All right, when you're ready, find a standing forward fold. Just keep your block handy. Shake your wrists out. And then come up to standing. Reach your arms high. Exhale, hands to your heart. Sit down in your chair. And we'll find our twist to the right again. So right hand on your sacrum, left hand outside your knee. Or you can find left elbow outside that right knee. And then we'll, we'll come down even lower. So we'll try Parsva Vakasana, we'll try Twisted Crow. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I like to get into it. And then you can just play. So I'm gonna hop my feet back a little bit. I'm in this little crouch. So my knees are gonna point 45 degrees to my left. So I can twist to my right and place my hand right where I would for a downward facing dog. So my right outer thigh is gonna come be connected with my left upper arm. And you can kind of just play here with your twist. And maybe even just bring your hands to your heart and twist down here low. Play with the strength of your feet. Or you can start leaning and find those chaturanga arms. Okay, so we've been here. 
And so you'll just come onto your tippy toes more, really connecting that right outer thigh with your left upper arm. And maybe your feet just float. So just come in and out and just play with it. Let your feet just do what they do. And think about bringing that center of gravity, like your heart, forward between your hands. And then just let yourself come down onto your bum. Hold on to the backs of your legs. Then just find yourself on your back. And windshield wiper your knees a couple of times. And then wiggle your shoulder blades together. Lift your hips and just clear through those hip flexors after all of that deep flexion. It doesn't need to be deep, it's just kind of a release. Let your bum come to the floor and then just roll to your left. We'll come onto our hands and knees here. And turn and take that right foot outside of your right hand. Okay, tuck those left toes and ground your left heel. And here you can find your block. I'm going to use it on the medium height. Okay, and we're going to put play with Ekapada Kundinyasana too, which is a long, which is a long word, but it'll be fun. And we've got this block here. So you're gonna play with the relationship of your right upper arm and your right inner thigh, okay? So just see if you can hug that right upper arm into your right inner thigh. And then see if you can bend your elbows and find a relationship of your left upper arm and your rib cage. And just kind of go back and forth between those two. And it might be easier to find that relationship if you take your right hand and kind of snuggle it, snuggle it onto the outside of that right foot. So you're just gonna play here and find that bending in your elbows. And then you can play with grounding that left thigh on your block and then leaning and just maybe lifting that right foot up off the floor and your left foot up off the floor. Okay. And just play with your hand placement. Everyone's geometry is a little bit different. And you might even be able to, once you get up, straighten through that right leg. So after you've tried that a few times, if you want to try it without the block, you can. I like to snuggle my arm under and really bring this left elbow into my rib cage. And then you have to kind of, we'll just, go back into our Prasarata Padatanasana, wide legged forward fold. And just kind of recalibrate after that. Notice the difference between your right leg and your left. You can put your palms face up. Give your wrists a break. And then release, bring your hands to your hips, just come to standing. And then turn to face the top of your mat and just take a big step. And we'll just do all of that again on the other side. So sit down in your chair and then find your twist to your left. So this can be where you stay. You just play with your twist there and snuggle that right arm down outside that left knee. Then lift your heels. Come down in your little crouch. 
and then hop back and aim your knees over to the right, but then twist so your heart can face forward. Okay, so I'm gonna face you this time. So my knees are pointing to my right, I'm twisting to the left. Really snuggle that right upper arm um, and connect it with that left outer thigh. And then my hands are like downward facing dog. Reach forward and you can find those chaturanga arms and maybe come higher on your tippy toes as you reach your heart forward. And then maybe you just float your feet up off the floor. You can always put a pillow or a blanket in front of you if you're afraid that your face will fall. Sometimes that's helpful. But just come in and out, let it be a game. After you've done that a few times, just come down onto your bum, lay on your back, and windshield wiper those knees. You can keep windshield wipering, or you can find your little bridge, maybe even just bend your elbows and shake out your wrists. You're there. You can kind of just think of your spine as a hammock. You can even let your bum kind of sway. Okay, we're going to play with our other one. So roll to your right, come onto your hands and, and yeah, hands and knees, and get your block handy. And then step your left foot outside of that left hand, tuck your right toes and ground your heel. And then get your block, just got it on the medium height, and then lining it up with that right thigh. So it's just kind of a support. And this helps you kind of get the upper body memory and you don't have to worry so much about the core strength to be lifting that leg up. You've got some support so you can play. So find the relationship of that left upper arm and your right inner thigh. Okay, and then also see if you can find the relationship of your right upper arm and your right rib cage. So you can just play there and find where your hands feel best. You can play with snuggling that left shoulder underneath your left leg and bringing that hand outside of your left knee some. And then maybe play with floating your feet up off the floor, any amount. And you can try it with your hands inside that left leg or out, or, your, or that left hand outside. And after you've done it a few times, and you want to, you can experiment without the block. Just bringing that right elbow in toward your rib cage. Don't make shelves in the way. All right, and then find your wide leg forward fold. And let yourself just bow and sway from side to side. Let your hands reach back between your legs, palms face up. And just collect your breath. Walk your hands out in front of you. Just toe heel your feet toward each other. Keep your hands up on your thighs. We'll just actually make our ways to our backs. So just find a seat. And lay yourself down. And then bring your hands, like the backs of your hands into your armpits. So we've got little chicken arms. 
that you're just um, finding some extension through your wrists. Just folding your wrists the opposite way and just kind of letting them relax there in your armpits. And release Bring your hands alongside your hips. Draw your shoulder blades together. Push into your feet. Lift your hips. Just pause part way. Kind of shift your weight from your left heel to your right heel. And then find it equal. You might lift a little higher. Maybe interlace your fingers underneath you. Or you could put your block underneath your sacrum and just let it be a support. Let yourself find your breath really open and expansive here. Let's see if you can remember that word we found at the beginning of class. That useful emotion that you want to fuel your day. As you're ready, release your hands or remove your block. Just bring yourself all the way down. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Windshield wiper your legs from side to side. And then when your legs get over to the left, just pause there. And you can even stack your left heel on top of your right knee just to kind of traction some length and that internal rotation and then the right so as maybe even reach your right arm alongside your ear and just switch sides just take that heel off drop your knees so your feet are wide and then drop your knees to the right and then just take your right heel and stack it on your left knee maybe even just reach your left arm alongside your ear just kind of tractioning and lengthening that left line the left side of your body Just one last breath there. And unwind yourself. Find something symmetrical to set yourself up for your final relaxation. I always like happy baby pose, maybe just hugging knees into chest. And then as you're ready, you just make your way onto your backs. And just let yourself relax. Let all the places connected to the floor just spread. And really pay attention to the relaxation in your face. Relax your forehead, your eyes in their sockets. Relax your jaw. And swallow, relax the root of your tongue. Just let your tongue relax behind your upper top teeth. And as your jaw relaxes more, just notice how your pelvic floor relaxes at the same time. And just let your whole body be a mirror of the relaxation in your face. Just letting your forehead go, the skin on your scalp really just drape. Your eyes relax, your cheeks and your jaw, your mouth.
Just let your breath breathe itself. See if you can just watch it come and go without any effort on your part. And just feel free to stay here as long as you would like. Really let your whole body come to a place of relaxation. Let your heart rate come back to normal before you re-enter your day. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. Good work. <laughs>